Hey, this is Fish on a Heater, and this is the Battle Breakdown, where we take a look at a set of Sulfurina battles and break them down into little pieces to see what we can take from it for future battles. Uh, this is a battle against... Uh, we, we call them Buck. Uh, the, the entire Pokemon Go... The global Pokemon Go PvP scene knows Buck, and they call him Buck because somehow he got that name past the senses. Uh, if you don't know uh, what that name is and why it's incredibly rude, then don't look it up because you will be horrified <laughs> at what you find. Um, but, also happens to be a really good battle. Like, really good. <laughs> um, and so, I... Uh, had uh, I was playing this practice tournament. Uh, I have uploaded previous videos of uh, uh, previous rounds in my, my last three videos. This is round number four, the final round. I'm on a sweep so far. I've just beaten an ace tier trainer, which is a good accomplishment. It was by the skin of my teeth, or by the the skin of a jellison, but it um, it happened. So now I come up against Buck, who is also three and O, and Buck has got a pretty interesting team. It's a little bit off meta. Particularly the Makago. Makago is so interesting as a pick. It's going to absolutely murder a Gavantula. It's going to punch a hole through a Frostlass. Um, it's got to watch out for the Dragonair Aquatail. Um, and I believe my Mel Metal does have the edge over the Makago. Uh, so really the two things that I would think the Makago is, is concerned with is the, is the Galvantula and the Frostlass. Uh, which, they're both very popular Pokemon. I'm actually going to, I did not plan to do this, but I'm gonna go to the Sylpharina website, and I'm gonna quickly look up the stats at the moment for uh, usage in Vortex Cup. So we got uh, Frostlass is number two, Galvantula is number three, Primate sitting at 34%, which I think that is getting higher. But uh, yeah, so the, top, the, the second and third most used Pokemon, Mikago, will murder uh, both of those, and actually the fourth most used as well, and the fifth. Of course, I forgot Mandibuzz, so that that's a really good pick. I like that pick. Um, yeah, good good work, Buck. Uh, unfortunately for him, I'm only running one of those Pokemon. <laughs> so Makago probably not going to get as much use here. Now, I have an issue with my, uh, with my battles that I am trying to get over. But it's proving difficult, and that is the idea that when I'm analysing which Pokemon to bring into a battle, I just look at all six of their Pokemon and figure out which three of mine have the most overall wins against their six. But like I just said, that Makago is likely, very likely, to be there to target Pokemon that it that aren't there so I don't have to put that into my calculations I like I've got to be I can't leave myself completely completely open to a Makago I've got to have a way of dealing with it but it doesn't have to be a consideration I don't have to worry about oh uh, you know will will a Makago lead ruin my day um, it's it's not nearly as likely to be played as all these other picks. Um, Lapras, for example, can beat the Frostlass just fine. It's it's actually a pretty well known counter uh, to a Frostlass. Um, Lapras can also beat the Dragonair fairly comfortably. Uh, Jellicent does like a Lapras. Um, also, Buck, massive fan of Talonflame. Uh, Buck loves his Talonflame. Uh, this was uh, fought back before Community Day, so it has Fire Spin rather than Incinerate. 
but nevertheless, it is still a very good Pokemon. Uh, let me see. Um, what was I going for here? Was this, uh, so, I mean, you would think, you would think that Talonflame beats Frostlass, but we are just going to double check. Just for the sake of science. Fire spin. Oh, what? Look at that! This is how powerful Frostlass is! It's winning the 1 0, the 1 1, the 2 0, and the 2 1. If. Talonflame wants to shield twice, then there's nothing Frostlass can do. Also, if Frostlass doesn't want to shield, there's nothing Frostlass can do. Um, but now, kind of most, the vast majority of people will be running Incinerate, so let's see what kind of difference that makes. And suddenly, uh, a lot harder for Frostlass. It's only winning these three situations here. So Talonflame... Now a better matchup for Frostlass. Before it was losing the one-one, which is crazy. Um, so, in this particular battle, Lapras is uh, the only Frostlass counter apart from. Oh no, no, Mandibuzz counters it too. So yeah, got, got plenty. So, just more and more reason for Mikago not to be there. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, all right. So let's. Yeah, let's get let's get into the battles, shall we? Uh, oh, that's there we go. Uh, so here is what I was talking about in a previous video uh, about the Diggers v versus Blaziken matchup. Uh, in case you didn't see that, look at those wings at the back there. Uh, in case you didn't see that video, or you should go back and watch it. Come on, mate, you know expect me to do everything. Um, <laughs> Blaziken actually wins the 2-2 two -two shield, whether uh, whether the diggers be baits or not. So that is the one shield. In the 2-2 two -two shield, um, going on here we are uh, we are building up a little bit extra like that's a stone edge now I think we're building up to two blaze kicks and then we're yeah we're firing back to back I should have actually looked over here <laughs> before looking at that going on oh, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting pattern here uh, so this is a scenario where um, the 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 moves are being fired back to back without a Oh no, there is there is another a charge move let through, a uh, fast move let through from Diggersby. That's interesting, and we're still winning. So that doesn't matter, is is what we're learning from this. But what I like to do is time it to fire at the same time that I expect them to fire. So uh, I would fire my blaze kick. I think that's what I do in these battles. I fire my blaze kick after eight mud shots. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. It's got enough for the earthquake there, but it's going fire punch. I would fire my blaze kick here because I know for a fact that I'm not going to let through an extra mud shot accidentally, and I know for a fact that I win CMP. Look at this: 142 versus 100. That is a 40% increase in attack for those of you playing at home. So Blaziken does just fine. You can see in this sim. It's all fire punches. There's no earthquakes even thrown. Because it tries to bait me twice and I shield twice. And I still am good to go. So the counter obviously doing its work and there's my blaze kick. And so you saw that I, I fired it after eight mud shots. And there's that CMP tie. I shield, I believe this is I don't know why this particular battle stands out so well. 
There's my second blaze kick, and uh, they let that go, interestingly. Um, blaze can get dirty. Uh, no, what am I doing now? So I, I obviously would have fired this second blaze kick a little earlier, because it had built eight mud shots, and then fired the fire punch, so... Eight mud shots gets you 72 energy, uh, fire punch is 40 energy, so it's on 32 at that point. It's only going to take five more to get to the next earthquake. So this is one, two, three, four. I, I should have thrown one more. One more counter, but that's fine. Alright, uh, hang on. Is it... It's a uh, 40, 48, uh, 56, 64. And I forget, is Earthquake 60 or 65? It's 65, so it would have taken one more. To get to that Earthquake again. Um, out comes a Talon Flame. And we get a bit of lag there. And then, uh, I think I had, uh, okay, so what happened there, I, if I'm getting my timeline right, I had previously come up against Buck and his Stone Edge, uh, sorry, and his Talon Flame, and I had Stone Edged it, like it was a 0-0 zero, zero shield situation, and I Stone Edged the crap out of it, it just was deleted from existence. Um... I think there, um, he expected me to throw the bait that time, uh, and obviously was wrong, so he lost the, the talent flame as well, and now he's got this second bird uh, that's coming out. Uh, I might be able to get to a, a stone edge again before the before it reaches the aerial ace, and I win CMP again, if, if that's what that was. And doesn't shield there either, which that one, I think was a, an issue because uh, like I, I'm, I'm not gonna try and bait again there uh, I'm, it's I'm too low on health it's gonna be too risky trying to get to another stone edge uh, before being taken out uh, now the reason I shielded here is because um, I knew I could counter the man to buzz down and I get a lot of val a lot of value from not revealing what my last two Pokemon were. I, I swept with the Blaziken here. Um, and uh, the fact that Buck only saw one Pokemon means it's a lot harder for him to strategize and adjust his strategy for the next one. So I punched the Vulture to death. And take out round number one. Here's round number two. And we get Dragonair versus Diggersby now. Uh, so, should still be a win for me. Same deal where Fire Punch is resisted and Earthquake definitely not. And Earthquake should KO. Uh, let's do the Aqua Tail. So now we're in a situation where I shield this thinking that even if it's Fire Punch, they won't be able to get to... Uh, the Earthquake, especially since I throw the Aqua Tail there. Now, uh, if if they decide they want to try and hit me with the Earthquake, they will shield. Um, it'll be down to, to paired shields again, 1-1. One, one. Uh, but in that case, I've got such high uh, HP left and I can farm down a little, so I'm definitely going to shield that. And they do shield and throw. It's unfortunate that it was so darn close. Oh, am I not shooting? I did shield. <laughs> Don't scare me like that, fish. So now I'm in a very commanding position. I've got three uh, practically full health Pokemon. Uh, so I just opt to take out as much damage uh, on this Mandibuzz as possible before Blaziken comes in. That hurt. 
Um, so it's I'm probably not going to be able to counter this thing. No, definitely can't counter this thing down. Uh, but now we're in an interesting situation because I am depending on what is in the back here. Oh, unless I can, I can uh, faint it first. What have we got? It is Talon Flame. So. I <laughs> tried to catch a charge move there, but like. Jellicent's not worried. I mean, that did do a, a ton of damage. Never mind, I, I was incorrect. Tell him playing. Oh, hang on! The Blaze Kick was ready! Son of a gun! So I threw the blaze kick here. And how much energy do I have? I've got, uh, I had practically zero. Uh, out comes Talon Flame. And really, I probably should have just fired. What's Talon Flames? Uh, okay, I, I, I keep forgetting what uh, Flame Charge and uh, Brave Bird the energy cost is. So Brave Bird is uh, 55 energy and Flame Charge is 50. So uh, Flame Charge takes 5 Fire Spins, Brave Bird takes 6. And so how much energy did that thing have? Back too far. Ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, sixty, seventy. Uh, so by the time I switched out to um, the Jellison, it had fifty energy. Which was enough for a flame charge, which would have KO'd me. So I obviously did try and, and catch the... I, I was about to say I obviously did try and catch the flame charge, but I didn't know how much energy flame charge cost. So that cannot be what happened. I think I just guessed is what must have happened. Um, so how close was I to a stone edge? Would I have made it to a stone edge? I, w I mean, I would have made it to a stone edge before the Brave Bird came out, but we established that uh, Flame Charge was enough to KO. So if the intention was to throw the energy, then I did the right thing. Uh, but obviously, Buck, this is this is a smarter thing to do. Uh, Buck needs to make sure that you know there's there's a pretty solid chance that. Whatever I do have as my third Pokemon, it'll be a lot easier to beat if it's got, you know, 80 energy up its sleeve than if it's got none. So that was the smarter thing to do. Um, and it meant that I had to, I had to, I had to hit this thing twice. So obviously the Brave Bird comes in, severely drops the HP. Uh, those hexes are now doing quite a bit I burn that shield, and that Talonflame definitely has the energy to take me out, but luckily for me, Blaziken is just such a high attack Pokemon that, uh, oh, let's, let's see this to completion, that it just wins CMP so, so often. Um, yeah, so 119 there, it's, uh, Blaziken is definitely winning, and it's lucky that I had that Blaze Kick charged up, so it was kind of like the perfect situation where I had the Blaze Kick ready, and uh, at, at the same time as Talonflame had the Flame Charge ready, because that made it double, doubly uh, relevant, doubly right to switch out to the Jellicent at that point. 
um, and then obviously I just had to burn that shield, and then uh, Buck, I think, still did the right thing in using Brave Bird, even though it ensured that the hexes and the blaze kick were enough to KO it. Um, I still think that like flame charge would have done nothing, nothing. Uh, Jealous. We don't need to change his moves. Uh, flame charge would have done 20% to a, um, a Jellison, 60% from a Brave Bird. Um, so like, yeah, it, it it has to throw the Brave Bird if it has any chance of winning that. Flame charge is just a waste of energy in such a clutch like, game situation. So that's it, I swept, I swept the tournament. Uh, I still have one more, uh, one more battle to go. And again, we've got the Blaziken versus Diggersby situation. We know how this works. Uh, I've got the double dragon in the back, and he has not seen me use that double dragon strategy yet. So I, I do the same thing. I'm, I'm shielding whatever comes in. I don't, I don't care. ED, GAF. Uh, Buck commits his second shield, and so I do as well. And now I can just counter it down. Out comes Talonflame. I'm going to get to a Stone Edge, and this is so satisfying. Look at that Talonflame disappear. Um, and then... So Blaziken just doing so much work in the lead in this particular... Um, in this particular set. And I get off another blaze kick. That is so crazy. Blaziken almost took out the entire team and the two shields on its own. Like, what? Um, Primate probably could have done the same. Probably. Um, because what did we have? We had oh no, no, it wouldn't have because it was all it was all that stone edge on the talon flame. Like Primate would not have been able to do that. The the fact that Blaziken one shot the talon flame with the stone edge that was that was big. And so out comes Wireless to complete the sweep. Um. I still maintain Buck is a fantastic battler, like, uh, it's... I, I happened to get him in the, this uh, unranked practice tournament, and actually in another unranked practice tournament, uh, probably the next day, I think. But uh, I don't think I've beaten him yet in ranked play. <laughs> um, I think he's, he's actually... Uh, he's concentrating more <laughs> in the ranked play. So uh, don't take this, this win as any sort of indication of his or my skill. But... Uh, you know, I, I do have the fact that I did sweep that whole practice tournament as, as something to fall back on. Um, bit of a quicker episode this week. This week. This this time. Um, hopefully you did still get the same amount of education from it as what we have done in all the other vids. I hope that this helps you build that ranking. And if you like the videos, you like what I do, uh, then the best thing you can do is uh, either or um, uh, like, comment, share the video uh, and subscribe uh, because you know that helps it get discovered by more people uh, which is just you know the, the best thing you can do for a, a small name content creator. Um, thank you and I'll see you in the next video.